Hey there, sales fitness team members. It's Wayne. Ah, hope you're having a great day. Uh, I don't know when you're watching this and I may record it and use it as content for later on. Some of you were just on a call where we were working on positioning statements. And what I have out here on our call on positioning statements, we talk about a script. We talk about on the way to first base and how to use positioning statement, how to use your unique personal positioning statement, which is based on the problems that your ideal clients are likely to have. And we work through on the call, the positioning statement comes in after introduction, segue, and permission. And I was explaining what introduction, segue, and permission are. I'm going to take a photo of this as well. And of course, you should have your baseline selling book. If you don't have it, it'll be on the way. Page 61 of the book goes through an example of introduction, segue, permission, and then the positioning statement. And it, it doesn't get into the two problems part of it. It gets down to the positioning statement, the permission, and then goes a little bit of a different way. Uh, Cause there, there are variants to how we run initial calls, warm calls, follow-up calls, so on and so forth. But introduction is this line. Hi, John, it's Dave Curlin in this script. That's the introduction. Segue would be, it doesn't sound like you know who I am, and I'm gonna run through this for you. Permission would be, can I tell you why I called? And then positioning statement is, I help, in this example, I help plant managers who've had one too many, oh shit moments, when they needed but didn't have qualified emergency staff. Can I ask you a question, is the next, permission. So that's as far as we get. And then what Dave's doing in this scenario is just asking an open-ended question. Um, well, and actually not that open-ended. It's a little bit more closed because it could lead to a number or a measure of frequency when he says, how often does that happen in your company? Good question to get somebody talking. Uh, in, in our scenario today, we were working on throwing out a couple of additional problems and then asking if any of those um, ring true to them all you know, different approaches to get somebody talking. That's the idea, get them engaged, get them to say, that's me, this person gets me, this person is different than all the other salespeople who have called me, is what we're working to do. In this script, and here's what you can do if you're on the phone, you can absolutely read this, but you need to have rehearsed it a few times before you call and use it, because if you don't rehearse it, even though you're reading it, you're not going to be listening to what the prospect is saying back to you. You're nervous. You don't like making calls. Most people don't. You have to read through it and be prepared so that you're, you can read it when you're on the phone with them. But if you haven't rehearsed it with somebody else in a role playing situation, you're going to have a hard time staying in the moment, listening to what the prospect's saying and knowing if they go off track, because they may not follow the script, right? They don't, they don't have their copy of the script like you do. So rehearse it with somebody else, practice it, not too much though, because you just gotta jump on the call and do it. Some people are concerned that they're gonna sound canned or scripted. You don't have to, as long as you choose not to. And again, that's where rehearsing comes in, and that's where working to get over the initial jitters comes in. And the other thing is, if you sound rehearsed and scripted a couple times, who cares? It doesn't matter. Dial another one. It's all good. And I know that's not easy for many of you, but you'll be fine. Uh, you know, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So the way we use a script without sounding scripty is, like I said, we choose not to. We rehearse it. It goes like this. Uh, Hi, John. It's Dave Curlin. And they would say, yes, Dave. Uh, it doesn't sound like you know who I am. Can I tell you why I called? They say, sure. Well, hey, I help plant managers who've had one too many oh shit moments when they needed but didn't have qualified emergency staff. So can I ask you a question? See, if you choose to read it in a canned, scripted, monotone, straightforward way, then that's what you do. But if you practice reading it, with somebody else and let them play the other part, you'll get better at reading it as though you're just talking, having a conversation with somebody else. So that's uh, tip of the day 
is and and how we use these things we're going to keep working on writing your own positioning statement it helps you get to the problems you solve instead of just dealing with surface features and benefits and price and things like that you're doing a great job keep at it uh, write your own practice it with somebody at work i have my two chairs set up right here because this is how you role play telephone calls unless you can go in a different room or unless you're actually remote and you're not with the person then you can literally dial them on the phone that's a good idea you don't need to have somebody in the office with you to role play but if they're in the office with you you must turn your back like this back to back when you role play because when you're on the phone you're not going to have visual cues you're not going to have visual body language type communication so you must go back to back and not look at each other it's fine to giggle a few times no big deal no harm no foul and uh, you'll get better at this, I promise. I promise, I promise. If you work it, if you write it down, rehearse it, you will get better. The jitters will get better. They will go away and it won't be a problem for you anymore. You're awesome. Keep rocking. Thanks. Wayne Herring, out. <laughs> kind of like Seacrest, but not quite, right?